Alright guys, check this out. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and today I'm bringing you a brand new project. This is kind of like a remake of my original gnome home that I built over, started building over 10 years ago. And I worked on that home for many years. I learned a lot of things while I was working on it. The one thing I learned was I built it too big and unmovable. Uh, it was on a card table. My dad ended up putting uh, wheels underneath it and strengthening up the legs, but I built it so large that I could it wasn't practical, so I took it apart. Um, I'm also building without any boxes. The only cardboard that's in this home right now is the floors. Everything else is built out of foil. I started off my original gnome home with foil walls, but then I would add clay on the inside walls to strengthen them up because I thought that's what I needed to do. But as I was uh, learning and building over the years, I realized the structure is strong enough as it is. I don't need to add clay in there. So when I started this home, I was going to add clay again, but then I thought, no, why do that? I don't have to do that. Um, if you wanted to follow along and you're not comfortable building with foil like I am, you can stack boxes and build your bark around the boxes. I believe it was 2018 that I did a video series of a home out of stack boxes. So if you wanted to check that out, you, you can check that out. So there's going to be a number of videos in this series. I have no idea how it's going to end. I have no idea when I'm going to end it, but um, this is far from done. And the foil I use to build is the super strong stuff. Uh, if you're going to get the cheaper foil, then you're going to use a lot more than I do. And then I use masking tape. I buy this in bulk from Home Depot. It's a uh, scotch contractor grade. I one time tried to get masking tape from the dollar store and it didn't work. It didn't stick very well. And I've said that once before, and then I got a bunch of comments that, that said that they use masking tape from the dollar store and it works great for them. So with that being said, if you go to a dollar store and you see masking tape, try out one roll before you buy a whole bunch, because that's the mistake I, I made. I saw it and I thought, oh my gosh, there's masking tape in the dollar store. And I bought like 20 rolls and they were, they were terrible. They wouldn't stick to the foil at all. So with that being said, make sure that your foil doesn't say non-stick on it because you need your masking tape to stick to it. Okay, and then we're going to use paper towels for the uh, to strengthen up the inside walls and also for the bark. You want to find cheap paper towel, nothing that says uh, quilted or three ply, okay? And if you only have three ply on hand, you can pull off one of the plies. In the past, I used to use a paper towel that uh, the, the design would disappear when it was when it was wet, and then when it was dry, it looked just perfectly, I could paint it, it would look like bark. This time around, I only have access to a paper towel that leaves tiny little squares behind, and I figured out how to fix that. So if you've watched my uh, channel in the past, and you made bark, and you had little squares in yours, and you asked me how to fix it, and I didn't know, now I know how to fix it. So you want to keep watching uh, the video. And because we are in October and I know some of you are wanting Halloween projects instead of a gnome home project, remember I do have this spooky tree who has a little uh, bowl on top of his head for, for candy and he has a light in the back. His eyes and his mouth light up. Um, this guy is made the exact same way I made this big gnome home here. There's no clay or wires or anything involved in this guy. And uh, yeah, many, many people have enjoyed this video tutorial here. I'll link this one in the pinned comment below. All right, I'm not gonna keep you in this introduction too much longer, but for those of you who've been waiting for my Spain videos, uh, in May this year, my boyfriend and I walked across Spain. Those are now up on my new channel and the link is in the pinned comment below. All right, I hope you enjoy the video and yeah, have fun and leave your feedback in the comments below. So the last time I worked on a project like this, I worked on top of a card table and the legs were not sturdy. So this time around, I wanted a table with sturdy legs. So I went to the thrift store and I found this little end table. I like the fact that the top comes right off. Uh, this is not attached. It's just a piece of glass with a frame. I can take that off whenever I want to. And the bottom uh, little knobby thing here, I just have to wiggle it free so I can put a shelf in there when I'm ready to do that. And like I said, sturdy legs, it did not come with wheels. Uh, my partner drilled the holes for me and we bought those wheels uh, separately. And now I have a beautiful moving table. So like I said, I want to put a shelf in the bottom. So a piece of uh, scrap plywood. I hacked the edges, as you can see. <laughs> Not concerned about that because you won't see that uh, when I'm all done. So I just wanted a shelf to work on and that works wonderful. Uh, yeah, this top part here with the glass, you can just lift it right off. So I'm thinking about just building on top of that. And then when I want to work on the bottom, I can just take the top off and work on the bottom. 
And now I'm ready to start building on this beautiful little table. And before I begin building these structures, I have to get the tabletop to be an even uh, surface. The glass part is recessed. So I'm just gonna fill that up with cardboard. This is regular cardboard from a box that I got a uh, delivery from Amazon. So I taped the first layer together and now I'm putting a second layer and I'm gonna tape those together. And then I decided for the very top, it was still recessed a little bit. So I'm going to put one more layer of cardboard. I've got to lay out this glue evenly. So I'm just gonna use a piece of cardboard and spread that glue around and then lay my big chunk of cardboard on top. And then once I got that laid down, then I'm going to, to uh, tape all the edges so that the edges are taped to the wooden frame. So I want this whole piece to be one solid piece. So I'm gonna tape it all around the edges. I didn't really like the way this edge looked. There was a little bit of a gap there between the cardboard and the wooden frame. So I decided to fill up the entire tabletop with another layer of cardboard. So uh, again with the glue and then a larger piece of cardboard. So this time it goes from the edge to the very edge. Now I have to fill it in with two smaller pieces and tape those together. And then I'm gonna use my masking tape and go all the way around the entire edge. So making the cardboard and the wooden frame one piece. And then uh, way down the top and leave it to dry. All right, so my first building, I'm actually gonna build around this checkerboard and that checkerboard is gonna be my first floor. You don't have to do it this way. I've put floors in after the building's been built and I'm gonna show you both ways in this build. So for this one, I'm gonna use a checkerboard to start with and I'm just measuring the width here because I gotta make sure that I can fit this whole unit out my door when I'm all done. My very first build like this, when I built on a card table, I didn't do any measuring. And what happened was I ended up building so much and so wide and so big and so heavy, I couldn't move it out a door. So th that was another reason why I took the, the whole build apart was because it wasn't practical. I couldn't move it around uh, in the end. So I'm gonna keep this one within a certain measurement. For me, that's a little bit difficult, but <laughs> we're gonna get it done. And I'm not gluing this checkerboard down. I'm actually just using some masking tape to hold it in place. Once I get my walls built and all the material on, this checkerboard will not be moving. So I don't need any glue underneath it right now. And then uh, once I do uh, finish the walls and get, get everything finished inside, I'm going to take the masking tape part that you can see. I'm gonna take that off just by running an X-Acto blade along it and then peeling it off. So for my walls, I'm going to build strictly with just foil. I'm not gonna use any cardboard. And this is how I built everything originally many years ago. I always used just foil. And I know people have a hard time wrapping their head around that this becomes a very solid structure in the end. It starts off flimsy, but it's like building blocks. The more you add to the outside and the inside, the stronger it's gonna get. It's very, very strong once all the materials are on and dried. What I do is I roll off a length. I didn't measure it, but I'm going to uh, give you a few measurements in a minute here. Uh, for myself, I never measure. I just roll off a length and then I fold it once and then I fold it again. And so that way I have these little sections are all the same height and they're roughly the same width, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to add my second piece now and that one's gonna overlap the other one just a little bit. So there I go, I folded it once and then twice. And then I'll add it to the side here, overlapping the first one. And I'm going to hold it in place with masking tape along the bottom. So I'm going to add my third section now. And I think each, yeah, each side took three sections. But again, you don't need to measure all that kind of stuff. I'm just filling in the spaces here. And I want the walls uh, or the corners of the walls to be more rounded, like a tree. So I'm just making sure as I'm building here that they maintain that kind of like roundish. Even though I'm using a square checkerboard, in the end, each corner is gonna be more rounded, like a tree. So I'm adding the masking tape to each section where I overlapped it just to hold those sections together. And then I can go ahead and add masking tape to the whole thing. So with the ruler from the floor to the top of the thing is about 10 inches. If you're going by scale, a uh, 112 scale, every inch equals a foot. So if I was using a scale, that's, these would be 10 foot walls. I don't use a scale for the most part. I'm just building to fit the characters that I've already made. So I'm just eyeing it up. My characters are all three to four inches tall. Some of them with hats are maybe around five inches tall with hats, but mostly three to four inches tall. So now I'm adding the masking tape. Once this masking tape is on, and these walls are pretty sturdy as is. Of course, they can, they're can they flimsy still, but I mean sturdy, I can move them around. They're not gonna fall down. And you can see I'm adding tape at the bottom to the checkerboard. Like I said, in the end, I'll be peeling this off. 
like running an X-Acto blade around the edge and then peeling off what you can see. All right, so I'm gonna measure off uh, what I've rolled off here. So I've rolled off a length and then I folded it in half. It's about 17 inches long once folded in half. With that said, I don't measure anything. I just eye it up, but I wanted to give you a measurement there to work with. So the final fold is probably between eight and 10 inches wide. Uh, if you're using really cheap foil, you'd probably have to fold up a lot more. So you'd be rolling off a lot more. Really cheap foil is pretty thin and a little bit more difficult to work with. So I'm using the uh, super strong stuff. All right, so I'm gonna get the second wall up and again, following all the same steps, I'm going to tape those in place and then I'll cover the whole wall in masking tape and then I'll continue all the way around this checkerboard until all sides have a wall. All right, now the bottom floor is done with the foil and the tape. And now I'm going to add a second level. And I ran out of cardboard, so I had to go down to the dollar store and grab a few pieces of foam board, which is great to work with. Traced out my stump and then cut that out very roughly. You can see a lot of jagged edges there. And now I'm going to do the same thing as I did for the bottom floor and just cover it all up with foil and tape. And now I'm making foil stoppers so the top level, this top level, won't move around. So I'll go ahead and I'll cut out the access door to the front of the tree now. And once that's cut out, I'm going to cover up all the exposed foil with more masking tape. Very important when you cut in doors and windows that you cover up all that exposed foil with more tape. And for these rounded sections here, a little bit harder to fold it up without getting big creases. So I just cut a little slit and that'll make it easier for me to fold up around those corners. And once that was done, then I could go ahead and put my top level back on and then I could uh, hot glue those stoppers in place. First, I'm going to flatten out the bottom. I'm pushing them into the tabletop. You can't really see that there, but it makes a flat bottom that I can glue to. So I will add the hot glue to that flat bottom part and then I'll stick it up on the bottom, the bottom of that top floor and I'll go all the way around. So it totally makes a circle inside there. So the floor can't move around from side to side. Now I'm going to cover up that foil with masking tape. And now I can test out the stoppers and they work great. That floor will not move around once it's in place. Now I'm going to cut out a door on the second level as well because I do need access to the third level, which I'm going to be adding in a minute here. First, I'm going to cover up the exposed foil with the tape and then I'll get started on the third floor. All right, so for the top floor, I'm going to follow all the same steps I showed you in the previous two floors. So I'm just going to cut this foam board out and then add my foil and tape. And there I go. I got one, two, and three levels. And I'm not sure how I'm going to attach this top one yet, if I'm going to add those stoppers or not. I might do it a little bit differently for the top. We'll see. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave that for now and we'll come back to it. So far for these three levels, I've used two of these masking tape rolls. So I'm going to open up my third one here and get started on some added bark and texture, which I'm going to work the door uh, into this part here. So I want to say before we begin here, you don't always have to use hot glue when you're attaching the foil. You can just um, make your texture with the foil and then just tape it in, like hold it and then put a piece of tape and then you can tape the rest of it in. So if you're running out of hot glue, don't worry. Uh, it won't stop your job. You can keep going. I build a lot without hot glue. So I just put the foil in place, tape it in, and once I get the other layer on top, everything will stay put. So no worries there. So the reason why I used hot glue in this one is because I was trying to bend it into a certain shape because I've never done uh, split levels like this with the bark. I've always worked the bark in one solid piece from top to bottom. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit different for me. So I'm going to concentrate on this door part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the foil that I'm working on here at the top and the bottom and then the middle is going to be left wide open so the door corner slides in there. And so that little piece of added bark is going to hold the door in place. I'm going to do this on either side, but I'm just working on this one side first, of course. So I'm again using the hot glue just to keep it in place while I bend the top in inward here. And as always, I don't have a plan laid out. I'm kind of winging it as I go here, but it's going to work out perfectly in the end. I've done this sort of thing before and once all the materials are on and dried and painted, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. So I'm adding some texture to my door itself and this side part, I'm going to make sure that it also slides into my very first uh, foil piece there. So they kind of lock together once I want to put my door in. I'm also going to frame in a little bit of a door here and I can work on more of this later, but I'm just, you know, having something to start with. So you can see I've made a little bit of a door shape 
and then we'll come back to it when we're ready to actually put the door in. I can add on to this or take away from it. That's the great thing about building with foil. You're never stuck with anything that you do. So I'm just going to take that into place and keep in mind that's probably where I'm going to put my door and if I change my mind later, not a problem. There's the one lock-in piece. I did add the second lock-in piece off film. So this little corner here, and I've already taped it in, but I have to add more to it. So I'm just gonna put my door into place and then I'm gonna add more foil to the door itself on that side where the new lock-in piece is. So it kind of slides into that lock-in piece. And so the bottom part, I, I could squish it in so far and I knew that it would work once I slid the door into that little lock-in piece of bark. So now I'm just taping it in. All right, my friends, I think the door and the framing around the door has turned out just wonderful. I'm very pleased with it. For right now, I'm just gonna add a little nook on the side here. Now, this inspiration has come from the Brambley House dollhouse. If you ever get a chance, look that up on Google. It's super cute. Um, the nook that I'm putting in is on the opposite side from that dollhouse and it's going to be larger. But yeah, I just think that little nook on the side is going to be super cute. So I'm going to use foil again, and I'm just going to piece it together. I use three separate pieces, piece those together, and then attach them to the house. And I'm not using any hot glue here. I'm just going to tape everything in. All right, so I covered the inside with the masking tape, and now for the outside, I'm just going to add a little bit more texture before I add any more tape. I still haven't added masking tape on the whole outside yet because I'm not sure where I'm going to end that. And when I'm not sure what I'm going to do next on a certain part, I'll just set it aside for, for a while and I'll go on to work on something else. So what I'll work on is the door cover for the three sections of my tree. And this is going to be one long piece. This is what I did with my last gnome home. So I'm just adding the second piece here. I'm going to do three separate pieces that I taped together. So I've already worked on the bottom adding the second one and then I'll add the third one on top and then I can just put it on the floor and continue working on it and strengthen up that door. So here we go. I'm just going to be placing some scrunched up foil here, placing it on top and then I'm going to tape it all in. And of course behind the door I'm not doing any extra texture. It's just going to be flat foil. And I didn't show this part on film, but the very top of the door I just rolled the foil over and then taped all that in place so it created a lip that locks onto the top floor when I slide the door into place. And on the side here, I did add some more texture and because the home is in three levels, like I said, I don't wanna have any straight lines. So I'm making sure as I'm adding the texture that some of it sticks on the outside of whatever's on the bottom and some of it sticks on the inside. So when I'm looking at the tree, I'm not seeing any straight lines in the bark. So we'll work together on this other side and I'll show you what I mean. All right, guys, I'm just popping in with an edit because I did this a little bit backwards, I think, for, for helping you guys. For me, it's not a problem, but for helping you guys to add some stability to your walls before you work on the outside by adding the foil uh, bark and stuff, I would go ahead and put paper towel on the inside walls first and let it dry. Once it's dry, then you're going to have a lot more stability to your wall, and then you can go ahead and work on the outside. I think that's a better order of doing things. I did it a little bit backwards in this video, so I just wanted to give you that heads up before we continue on. I actually already added a piece of foil to this one side, but I didn't, I wanted it to be taller, so I'm just going to add in another little piece here and tape all that into place. And again, that's the great thing about foil. You can add on whenever you want to, and once you tape it into place, you'd never know that it's, that it's been pieced together. So I just want this little part here to be a little bit taller than the piece that I'm going to add beside it. So I'm going to add the piece beside now and that one, the very top of it's going to be shorter and it's going to be sucked into the tree that I'm taping it to, the top part. So when I put the bark on the, on the floor above it, it's going to hang over this one. So this one can get taped right to the tree itself. Okay, so I'm going to add the bark on to the second floor and this one is going to, at the very bottom, you can see, I'm going to hang it over the one on the bottom. So they, they interlock when it's, when it's all said and done. So you can see how I'm taping this. It's not getting taped to the wall, the very bottom. I'm taping it so it sticks out a little bit. So that part is going to hang over the bark underneath it. 
but I'm liking this. I like the idea that I can take it apart and work on individual sections. All right, so I added some paper towel to the inside walls and we're gonna be doing that together in a moment, but I'm just showing you the difference here. So that first wall I was shaking uh, did not move and this is one without any paper towel and it's really quite flimsy still. So the paper towel, once it's dry, does add quite a bit of stability to the wall. So again, it's pretty sturdy on its own. I did cut away the um, masking tape that was that was on top of the checkerboard and I pushed, as I was putting the paper towel on this wall, I was pushing in from the outside because once the paper towel is dry, it kind of has that memory, right? Um, I can still put it out, but I am putting uh, baseboards there. So I'm using uh, Elmer's glue all, and I'm just gonna show you, I never measure anything, but I'm just doing this for, for your benefit. I'm gonna put in three cups of glue, and then I'm gonna water it down a little bit to make it easier to work with. So once I get these three cups in here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a cup of water. and you stir that up really well. And again, I never do measure this part, I always just go by feel, but anyways, we're going to tear off some paper towels. Here. Okay, and then the very, I put them in a stack, and then I tear off the top and the bottom. This was only because I needed to shrink up the paper towel a little bit because my walls are only about 10 inches high. So I took about a, an inch off there. Now I'm going to take my paper towel, dip it in, fold the dry sides together, and then pull off the excess glue. This is where the water comes in handy. Makes this part a lot easier. And then I'm going to make sure I got glue over the entire piece of paper towel. And you can see I'm using my hand to do that. And now I'm just gonna simply lay this inside the wall. All right guys, a quick voiceover edit because when I first started this project, I was gonna add clay to the walls. And that's why I'm adding the paper towel the way I'm doing it here. Um, I decided to to paint the walls instead. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to add the paper towel to the walls if you're going to paint the paper towel, okay? So it's a little bit differently. In this clip here, I'm not worried about seams because I thought I was gonna be adding clay. I'm gonna overlap this piece just a little ways. And once I get this laid down, I'm going to smooth it out with my hand and making sure I'm eliminating any air bubbles that I find and any major wrinkles. You wanna work those out as well. And when you get to the edges like this, just make sure you're overlapping top and bottom and all sides. Make sure that they're overlapping. Yeah, you just take one last look and make sure everything is nice and smooth. If you have a sunny day, leave it outside to dry. If not, use a couple of fans that will cut your drying time down quite a bit. I usually do it at nighttime and I'll leave it overnight with a fan on it and wake up in the morning. It's always nice and dry and ready to be worked on. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I did the paper towel work before I painted, but before we get to that, I'm gonna knock a hole between these two rooms. And this is something like if you think of this before you paper towel, it's probably be a time saver. I always do this, always seems to be after. <laughs> I don't know why, but anyway, once you have the exposed foil, remember to cover it up with the masking tape. Okay, now I'm gonna take the paper towels and you can see I've, I've uh, torn them on all four sides and I have smaller squares to work with here. So it's gonna be a lot easier uh, getting this onto the wall and make sure all four sides are torn. You don't want to have straight seams anywhere. All right, and just like I showed you previously, you dip it in the glue, get the excess off, and then you just put it on the wall. And I'm going to make sure that all my uh, seams are overlapping. So every piece is going to overlap the previous one. And just like I showed you when we did the exterior wall, if there's an opening, anywhere, like a door and a window, you wanna make sure that your uh, paper towel is wrapping over and onto the other side. And I also took those torn pieces that I tore off the paper towel and I shoved them down, I filled them with glue and then I shoved them down along the checkerboard to fill in that gap that I had there. I went all the way around and it worked really well. And just cleaning up any wet glue that I've spilt on the floor there. All right, my friends, that will bring us to the end of this video. In the next one, I'm gonna show you how I did the texture painting, and we're also gonna continue working on the bark. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Make sure that you're subscribed, hit the little bell notification so you know the next time I do upload a video in this series. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.